Well, hi there. Yes, it's another Mess Hunter video. And today I'm going to start off my trek at the top of the suburb water filter that we've already taken a look at. And I'm going to follow the path of destruction that is down that way without the cockies attacking me. Now, one thing I've noticed is I can see that that chair that I put on the rocks down in the water filter has been played with. Ooh. I will be venturing down that way to underneath the library, but first up I'll take a look around the tennis club area. Just off to the side here, I've noticed something that's nice to look at. We'll take a quick look. Okay, yeah. This is a brush turkey mound. It's quite large actually. And what's good about these is the brush turkeys scrape up stuff from around the area, lots of things. And if you look on the ground, it gives you a bit of a story about what's going on here. I'm hoping that plastic bottle there is not modified. If you look on the ground, there's all sorts of bits of rubbish that the turkeys have pulled into the pile. Whether or not they're telling you a story is another thing. We're into the very beginning of winter as I'm making this video, and I'm not exactly sure what brush turkeys do at this time of year. I'd say it's active because I can see very fresh scratchings here. This is the sort of activity they do. And by looking over the mound here on the other side, yes, going by the scratchings in there, this is an active brush turkey mound. Normally it's the male that does those scratchings and uh, he is regulating the temperature of the eggs that would be laid into the mound. There's sometimes multiple areas where eggs are. And if we're lucky, we'll see the male brush turkey, but uh, sometimes they can be fairly elusive. You can see the carnage from that storm earlier this year. It was quite a vicious storm. It lasted all day, had savage winds. There's more wreckage over there. I found this track that I never knew about, but it's heading in the wrong direction. I need to go back to the tennis club. Mind you, there's people down there, so I'll have to be a little bit sneaky. Uh, interesting, there's cameras here, and often cameras deter people doing graffiti, but I can see a tag here. Uh, it looks a bit rustic, that one. I think it's been there for a while. There's a picnic area here, and I can see one tag there. And just coming up to the toilet doors, I can see some more graffiti and tagging there. There's another table here under the awning, and it's got a fair bit of tagging going on. But there's also, if I go up to the sky there, there's a camera right there. There's some scratching on the bricks there, and that's the nickname of the suburb where I live, B-Town. We know what the B stands for. I can see on the glass area here, uh, sadly there's more tagging going on. On this side here, and strangely there's some tagging on the ceiling there. So a lot of the tagging and graffiti here has been done under the video cameras here, but I'll tell you what, the system looks fairly new. It looks very fresh. Oh, okay, I just had a chat to someone at the tennis club. That security camera system is new, but it hasn't stopped taggers from coming in and making a mess. Let me just transport you back a day to the picnic table next to the dog park. That story's going sideways. Oh, it's a cold morning. It's the 2nd of June. It's uh, winter winter now, where I live in Australia. This table here was painted yesterday on the 1st of June, and again overnight, it has been tagged up. I can see many of the same old, same old tags here, although I think there's a couple of new ones as well. It's amazing how fast the uh, hoodlums come in and get this table tagged up. And I see some of them have a sense of humour as well. And I thought that now the teenagers have gone back to school that this activity may have decreased, but nope, that hasn't happened. That's very much a constant that happens down on this little picnic table, and I suppose that the person who identifies himself as the police has just got some more work to do and come along and repaint this graffiti back off the table. And we're now talking about multiple months that this activity has been going on here. It's not as if it's happening just every now and then, it's happening on a nightly basis and it's happening for months. It's a strange environment there. The gentleman who comes and paints the table, he told me he's the police. He also told me he was going to put bins there, and guess what? Bins have appeared, but he's up against a losing battle because as soon as he paints that table, well, the little local taggers come in and put their claim back on the table. It's wonderful. This is the local community hall and library. The library is still closed because it's virus times. It's all very quiet around the suburb still, and I might take a look down at an old hoodlum haunt under the library. 
as I'm coming down the hill here, I can see lots of wabbit activity. Yes, there's another wabbit hole here. I wonder if I'd be lucky enough to find Bugs Bunny. Yes, lots of wabbit activity here. And what does bug me is that in this area here, they bait the rabbits right at Easter time. And I think that's a nasty time to bait the rabbits. So this is under the library and before the skate park was built this was where the local teens used to come down and have a whole stack of fun. It'd be nice and dry in here if it was raining and you're out of sight from everyone in the suburb. It looks like someone's tried to do some markings there. That fence installed there is fairly new and I can see down on the rock there looks like some old scratchings. And you can see that they've repainted parts of these walls here because they would have been covered in graffiti. And if you could remove that paint, I dare say you could see what the teens of yesteryear were putting up on the walls in this part of town. If I stand in the right spot here and get the camera at the right angle of the dangle, you can sort of see what was previously painted there. This dirt slope here would have been fun to play in. And I can see they painted over what would have been graffiti up on that concrete area there. But looking down in the dirt, really, the footprints that I'm seeing there don't seem that fresh. It all seems like fairly old activity. There are security cameras up around this zone, and I think that has killed off some of the adventure that used to go on around here. Okay, moving right along, and I'm just going past the grand entrance to the community hall here, which I think most people have never used this entrance. I've never really seen it utilised in all the time I've been here. There's a lovely little park here. It's actually a fairly reclusive area of the suburb. The War Memorial is over there. And the part I'm interested in looking at next is just over here. This area here is a steep decline into a fairly deep valley. It's also been trashed by that storm earlier this year. And I'm a bit curious about what goes on down here. Okay. Okay, oh, I don't like the look of that. I'll carefully go down there and I'll try to clean up this mess. It's not very nice at all. Wow, this is, uh, this looks fairly fresh. I'm just uh, taking a look before I start to pull stuff out of here. Oh, crikey, there's a lot of bottles here. I'm just trying to get my head around this. Uh, maybe people sit on this railing here. Okay, so we're next to the library area there. The memorial is over there. Maybe someone sits here and they then throw the bottle down here. Just above the bottle area, it looks like there's a cave up there. It's just in there. Hmm. I'll pull these bottles out. I'll just throw them up onto the grass and we'll see what they say. I'm amazed how many bottles here. In fact, the more I look here, the more I see. Some of them are in brown paper bags. Oh, crikey, Charlie. I'm also noticing it's all the same style of wine at Sauvignon Blanc. Well, how do you say it? Blanc? Blank? I just call it Plonk. There are a lot of bottles in. I've got to be a bit careful throwing them up not to smash them, so I've got to just find different areas to throw them. Ooh, okay. There's a clear spot there. Just move down a bit further, and what I see here, this is really unusual. It's why are the bottles under the rock there? Now, if they're going under the rock there... Mm, what's that saying? Wow, they're going all the way down there. This is becoming a major, major exercise. Ooh. This is now the stuff which is like going underneath here. And I'll just show you the extent that these bottles go underneath. I mean, look at this. They just keep coming out. What is going on here? In fact, there's another one. Oh, man, I'm going to have to really reach in there and get it. Unbelievable. It looks a lot better now, doesn't it? That was just fripping messed up. And here's all the bottles that I got up to the top here. This is just really sad. Really, really sad to see this. Okay, I've tried to make some sense out of all those bottles there. I'll run the camera over the bottles here, and this is starting to talk to me. I believe this is all fairly recent activity. It could be connected to the virus times. The brown paper bag on two of the bottles is very fresh. We've had a lot of rain back in February, and I think if anything was out in that time then, it would be obliterated. The label's looking fairly good, Nick. There's only two bottles of Chardonnay, and I've put them up the ends here. 
There's another brown paper bag there in very good condition. And just looking at the labels and dates on everything else, it's saying to me, recent activity. I'm not a wine drinker, so I'm not exactly sure what Sauvignon Blanc is. Although I think in Australia people call it Sauvignon Blanc. So in that pile of bottles there, the odd bottles out are the ones at the end at the moment. There's one of them there. It says Chardonnay 2019. That's the other one there, Chardonnay 2019. And of course I am curious about the ones in the brown paper bags. I'll take a look at this one here first. Well, surprise, surprise, but no surprise. Sauvignon Blanc. This one here next, what do you reckon it's going to be? So that bag's a bit more deteriorated. Let's take a look. Hmm. That one there is a little bit broken up, but I'm pretty sure that's also Sauvignon Blanc. I say that because that's the same label as that bottle there. And the final mystery one, I think we all know what this is going to be. What do you reckon? There we go, Sauvignon Blanc again. This is one of the strangest finds I've had in my Mess Hunter videos. Look, it could be a wino's dump area, but you really don't know unless you see the person who's dumping these bottles. It does look like all very fresh activity. Who knows, it could be connected to the virus times. Well, I've just bolted home and I've grabbed that box because I am going to clean this up. And the one thing that I've noticed around here, there's no bins anywhere in sight. Uh, maybe that's part of the reason why stuff's just thrown in the bush. I suppose I can look at it as being my little bit for Clean Up Australia Day. Uh, never come across anything like this before. And uh, I don't know. It's a bit of an indictment on today, society and times, which are very strange. Lucky I brought two boxes down. That's a cold day and I lose light with cloud cover. I'm just going to go in here and see if there is a cave up in that area up there. It does look like a little bit of a trail through here. Just going up the rocks here carefully. This area has been trashed by that storm. A lot of trees have gone over here. Pretty wild looking actually and there is a little cave and I've just got to go through this stuff here to see it. Okay I'm at the cave section now and uh, it's a very low hung cave I suppose. If you wanted to get out of the weather you could come in here lay down in there. I can see a few bits and bobs in there that tells me people have been in there. Not exactly sure how, what they are and I'm not going inside there. And out the front of this cave I can see what looks like a really old Fanta can. I'm just leaning right into this cave area here. Yes, uh, I can see signs of human activity. Yes, it's nice there if you like uh, places that look like they're about to collapse on you. And I can sort of see a natural track. It's uh, up in the distance there. I'm on the track now and I am looking on the ground for bits of litter and things that tell me that people have been here. And I find something already. Oh, I've got no idea, just looking at the top of that, what this is. It's some sort of reel, uh, could be could be a fishing line type reel. Look, someone out in the YouTube audience can work that one out. I just leave it here. I can see the sun starting to get low, but the track that I'm on at the moment, I can see it's fairly well used. This section here is talking to me. I can see a bit of broken off stuff there. And if I look at that there, you can tell that there's been a fair bit of traffic through here. It's quite a defined track. Wow, it's actually a very beautiful part of the suburb. It's nice and quiet because there's no jet planes around because it's virus times. I can see a heap of trash trees up here. Just come to another rock area here. I can see what would be uh, some old graffiti done there. I can see a lolly wrapper down there. So the track's talking to me. It's always uh, wise to keep your head down and just see what's been around before you. Well, this is a curious part of the suburb because down in the gully there, there's a whole heap of houses. This is like trash tree area because the storm made a line right through here. And up on the top of the ridge there, there's more houses. Uh, but what I can see here, more signs of habitation. There's a bottle on the ground there and it's got fluid in it, but it doesn't look modified. That's unusual. It's an interesting area and the more you look here, the more little things you find. There's like an old log here. I can see a can which is well buried in the earth. Okay, yeah. Oh, okay. That's a beer can. There's actually 
caps of bottles and little shards of glass through here everywhere. I can see a bit of spray on the tree there. Yeah, something's been going on down here, but it's been a while back. Yeah, there's little things all through the ground here. I've just flipped on the other side of that log. It looks like there's been things burnt here. There's a cap of a, a bottle there. And there's more little bits of paper and things there. Well, that one there's a Milky Way wrapper. And I can see down here, looks like some medication there. Yeah, party zone from the past, I believe. And I'll try and get out of here. I'll head up this way and hopefully connect up with a track. Just as I get a bit higher here, I can see more damage from that storm back on the 9th of February 2020. Insidious storm and it sent a little mini cyclone uh, through this part of the suburb. There were so many trees that went down in that storm. It really is trashed tree zone. And storms like that, they wipe out the weaker trees. Often trees that have had termite damage in the roots and things. And uh, I can see a trail through here. It's easy to see in real life. I can see rubbish here as well. Okay, uh, it's a blow-up rubber mattress. I had to look at this for a little while just to work out what it is. I can see a couple of very weathered coat cans. Oh man, there's all sorts of stuff in here. It's like a, a whole feast has been put down here. What is going on here? Oh, this is very, very weird. I've never come across anything like this. Oh, yuck. Well, uh, who would leave this down here? There's a book here. What is going on here? It looks like it was a campsite. I think there's bits of a tent here. As well as... A... Why would you do this? I don't really want to dig any further into that. That is just outrageous. Oh, one thing that's saying to me, they had a big thing for drinking Coca-Cola and leaving a mess where it shouldn't be left. I don't like finding things like this. I think this is completely wrong. I mean, who would do this? They've just left everything down here and they thought they'd cover it up properly and what I will do is I will just cover this up so it doesn't get scattered around. There's uh, parts of a tent there. Now I look more carefully. And I can also see what looks like an arrow over there. So who knows, they might have been playing with bows and arrows down here. Maybe it's connected, maybe it's disconnected, but I will put this with the other mess over there. That wasn't nice to find in any way. Horrible to see that left here horrible more trash trees down there and i can see dung from animals on rocks so it proves to me yes there is life down here but you rarely see it during the day i'm entering into what was really a, a disaster zone and i can see the track goes through here big snapperoonie of a tree there okay so we're following the track through that way it goes up there wow it's really smashed up big time I'm just looking down here. You look at the trees. It looks like someone let off a bomb down here. It looks like after a war zone, the way the trees have been affected and smashed up. I'm nearly out. There's the hall there. And I'm just following the faintest of tracks to get out. Just getting past the last of it now. And I should be out right next to the community center. Uh-oh. Before we look at the community center, let's look at that there. Well, part of me is thinking this is a strange thing to find, but then again, another part of me is thinking that's not strange at all. Very sad. With the sun getting lower in the day, and if I swing the camera around like this, I'm back at the community hall. This end of the community center is very reclusive. You can get away with a lot of things here, except there is video cameras around, and maybe that's why there's no problems here. Mind you, it didn't help the tennis club. A very interesting and weird mess hunter video. Finding all those wine bottles, well, you start to ask yourself a couple of questions there. Is it just a hobo that lives down in the bush, or is it something a little bit deeper? Uh, the activity did seem like fairly recent activity going by the dates on the bottle and the way the labels were all still fairly intact and also those brown paper bags. Well I better leave this mess hunter video here and I'm sure someone's going to report to me hey Leo there's another mess in the suburb to look over and if I do hear of more I'll go and check it out. I should try and finish on something nice to look at instead of the nasty stuff. Down beside the community centre there's this wonderful little area and it's just like a rainforest and if you look in the right or wrong direction I could sort of say to you, hey I'm in the middle of the Amazon but then again you probably say no Leo you're just in a dodgy part of Sydney. It's very similar to the area which is next to that water filter, the same sort of environment. In fact I dare say it's 
almost in exactly the same sort of terrain. Wonderful area, lovely and cool. Mind you, it is the middle of winter.